basic chipping ideas, Matthew. Am I rubbish at chipping? So the process of connecting, hitting the ball on the face, not duffing the ground or thinning it, those kind of things. Or am I rubbish at imagination? So if I do connect it, do I hit my spot ever? Yeah. And if I do, is my spot the right spot to hit? So that imagination, so I play it how I want, does it actually go anywhere near the hole? Uh -huh. Or am I just rubbish at it all? <laughs> if you could, it, like breaking it down into these sections will really help people down this lens, I think, if they think about it this way, work on the right things to improve their short game. Yeah. Should we do a little test? That's... So I'm in the rough and I'm going to give myself like a medium roughy lie each time. Okay. Got my 52 degree wedge. Yeah. And I'm seeing my landing spot. With this, it's breaking to the left as around kind of this area. Okay. Is where I'm seeing it. Do you give yourself like a margin for error or not really? I'll be honest with you, I'm rubbish at landing spots. I, I'm just rubbish at visualising them. And it's the same with putt. So I'm a bit more, and it works with my putt, and it used to work with my chipping. Um, people, I would play in foursomes and stuff, and people would say, where do you want me to hit this? And I used to say, just up the right. Yeah. That I didn't, if I have a too much of a spot to concentrate, I concentrate so much on that spot. Yeah. That I don't concentrate down here. Yeah. So I'm a much, I'm a generalized area. Yeah. So I kind of think, like if I hit that brown patch there, I'm going to be not bad. Yeah with this loft okay because i'm i with me personally yeah so i would always go as close to the front of the green as possible yes yeah, so you want it you want to do less work and get it rolling yeah but i would always give myself like two meters from the front of the green okay and then if i miss my landing spot by a meter still gonna be good yeah i see what you mean like i'm never like pinpoint on a coin, on a 10p type yeah. thing. Yeah, that's I'm giving like, myself yeah. a two meter margin on everything. Like that. So is my landing spot right, or am I even not able to hit it, or can I even strike it? So I've thrown that too, too far. far. Oh God. And it's gone too far. Yeah. So that wasn't strike. Struck it well. Struck it good. It was the inability to hit my landing spot, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because I think- So oh, that hit of just a little bit short of my landing spot and it yeah it's just a little bit short so i feel like my imagination through the combination of loft yeah that's good that hit the spot pretty much and that's pin eye perfect you're just a little bit too far right not turning as much to the left because i think over the last few or month or so like your strike has got so much better. Yeah, it's and getting like, there, isn't it? That's four good strikes and look at the difference in distance control. Yeah. So you just now applying the right speed every time is where you're oh, gonna be really benefiting and seeing um, shots go a lot closer. So for me now then, I would be thinking kind of simple drill like this idea. So I've set four balls out in a square, like this is my zone. Yep. So the game now, for me, if I was at home practicing this, or you know, I had time on a course to practice this, how many can I land in there? Forget the other bit. Yep. I've already proven to myself on that first go that the other bit is mentally working correctly, isn't like it? You're visualizing the spot and the right loft to get, if you hit do hit it properly, it's going close. So yes. I feel like your strikes got better. Your visualization's a lot better. Yeah. Now it's just executing that um, power to get it in that box every time. So that missed. So that's, a, that's, yeah, zero points. Good. Oh, no long that was, wasn't it? See it's gone yeah, too far. Yeah, that's long. Sure. See, but it's coming lower, <laughs> so I've got away with it. Yeah. So I literally, you can see my skill of landing it in there. One in one. there out of Good. four now. And look at where it's finished. Yeah. Closest one. Yeah. <laughs> I do this with like a towel. Yeah. Make a square out of four clubs. Yeah. Like so anything that will get the player visualizing that landing spot. So two of them landed in. Yeah. And it was basically these two. Yeah. One I got away with because it landed short, but I thinned it a little. <laughs> so I'm still, that's the thing, I am still having to concentrate on strike. Yeah. Which is why I struggle to only concentrate on landing spots. Yeah, I think once you get your strike and you're confident, that's all you'll think about and you'll hit it more. Yeah. 
So the game is afoot. I'm now going to go different loft. I've got my 58. I've got to come over a bunker. I've set out my landing spot. I think I've got five balls. How many do I hit the landing spot with? Because if you think about it, what will happen is you go through different situations where from that lie coming in low, I could concentrate on landing spot. Yeah. This situation, it might cross. It might The landing spot might be irrelevant because it might duff everyone in there. Yeah. So then it's another bit of data to take to my coach or to my practice session. Look, that situation, I need to practice my landing spot. I've got it sorted. Yeah. This situation, I need to change my technique yeah. to then be able to practice my landing spot. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's so relative to your skill, isn't it? Yeah. I had a lesson. Oh, go. hello. Um, a few weeks ago, doing exactly the same. Bump and runs, absolutely fine. Good strikes, good landing spots, flop shots, strike. Not good like your first one. There you go. <laughs> one in, one in. <laughs> um, and so we just had to work on strike for this point. Yeah. And until he got strike correct, then we go on to the landing spot. That's short of my landing spot, short of the hole, but yeah. it's close enough to be okay. Yeah. Um, I see you're giving yourself quite nice lies on this one. Trying to <laughs> build some confidence, sir. <laughs> Get up. And I would say my pattern with a flop mm. shot when I'm adding mm. loft because I'm scared of a fin or duff. Again, this is where you can really learn if you lay out the agenda before you start like this. Yeah. Is always to come up short. Yeah. Because I'm scared to put speed in. Soon as you know your strikes going, you watch me or Rory, we're yeah. so tentative because we're literally like, don't duff, don't yeah, duff. Yeah, yeah, And I remember doing these as a kid and it was oh, about, whoosh, yeah. you know, you were getting cocky. Like, can you flop it over your mate's head yeah, and yeah. stop it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, the three that have done well are all short of the hole and they've landed short of my landing spot. So yeah. for me with this, it's a combination of that is still in my head. Yeah. So I need to still be thinking about my technique. Now, just a little idea with technique. So I've been practicing in the last few days about trying to really concentrate on moving low point forwards, which is about me trying to make sure I feel like if this ball's lined up with my zipper here, that I'm really trying to turn it forwards because I tend to have a little bit of a, a dump, a drop. Yeah. So for me, I've got something in my technique to try and help me hit that landing spot. That doesn't mean it's gonna happen every time. That's what practice is about. But it's mean I've got the two focuses. I'm practicing on technique, but I'm still not giving that away. I still want to be good at hitting those landing spots. That's it. Oh, just and too again, far. I, where I was able to hit landing spot from there, the flop shot is weak. Yep. Yeah, like, where am I going to spend my time practicing? And what you find people tend to do is they go to the spot that they know they can do because they like a nice yeah. practice. Yeah. Like, I need to get in this situation every time. Yeah. And do you know what I need to do as well? What? I need to get in that situation every time in front of my mate yeah. who's going to laugh at me every time I duff it. Because I can stand out here on my own and I get it going, but knowing yeah. that the camera's there, that the audience is watching, that I can look stupid, gives me the feeling I get when I'm playing and I want to score. Yeah. And that's when the riddles really come out. So I do this in my garden at home. Yeah. It gets boring. Yeah. So it's like, how do I add that tension? Well, I turn the camera on or I get my kids to come and do a game with me, those kind of things. And I also think the, the change in lie is important. Like you've just popped those on lovely lies. Yes. I don't know if you've made that point. I can't remember. They weren't that, that lovely a lie. They were all right. Like um, we did a video a minute ago where you were in the rough and on the fairway yeah. and just dropped five balls. Yeah. Like just drop the five balls and try and flop them from wherever they land because that's what's going to happen. Well, I'm going to do that now. But before Ooh. I do that, I'm just going to pull this ball out of this hole. Oh, Stop it. How embarrassing. Over the head, backwards drop. Oh dear. This is not fun. Oh, that's horrendous. Like you're... That's a bunker one, isn't it? Yeah, you're changing technique and everything now, I would think. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Like that's decent from that lie. And that's a bunker as well in mine. That opinion. is, yeah. It sat down a little. Ball. Oh. I got the ball clean but again i'm putting as that technique so what i'm doing there is i'm literally if the ball's in the middle of that divot look mm. i'm literally exploding it like a bunker shot yeah i think all of these that's a bunker shot <laughs> like at this time of year you're lucky to look not that. like that's, that's so good. good yeah that is good so i try and do one where i strike that one possibly yeah just Still like really nippy though. 
nippy like you were. Yeah. There you go. Can't do it, can you? Well, I need to bunker it. I'm going to try another nippy here. Bit more speed with nip. Yeah, that's oh. what I'm always scared of, yeah. is that one. But again, that is better than that one. Yeah. So again, there's that pattern, isn't it? Landing spot there became irrelevant. Yeah. The, the goalposts have moved. Strike was so challenged that if I got it anywhere near that landing spot, I was happy. Yep. It was avoiding the one behind you in the bunker and anything thinned over. And again, it was changing my technique to sit, to kind of, you have to be robust about when you're being strict with landing spot or not, or not yep. isn't it? Your, yeah, your attack expectation defend, attack and defend. levels do need to change. Yeah. Um, those second bunch off those lies, like I'm thinking, up and down is a bonus. Well, it'd be like a proper win. Yeah, yeah. Great little drill. Get your landing spot set out. See which situations you're allowed to go for them or not. The ones you're not, work out any technique that gets you getting it around the area of the green. Because sometimes I think with chipping, golf videos, those kind of ideas, it's very easy to get black and white. Yeah. Oh, they say I need landing spots. And if you start applying that to every situation, well, you can see it was detrimental in that last one. Yeah. So it's about using the information to help you get better, not making it kind of restrict you back a little bit. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for your time. Good stuff. Good stuff. Like that bunker shot, just need to get a bit better at it.